Welcome back to On My Bookshelf. In this episode, I'm not only going to be looking at Photograph in the Night Sky by Alan Wallace and published by PhotoView, but I'm also going to put the skills that I've learned from this book into action in the real world. Can this book turn a total night sky photography newbie into someone who can capture a successful image of the night sky? Let's find out. If you've been watching On My Bookshelf for a while, you know that I'm a big fan of the photo view titles. They have inspired me and introduced me to many great locations and saved me a ton of time when time in that location is at a premium. It's why I have so many of them and could a link to all the photo view episodes of On My Bookshelf in the video description below and at the end screen of this video. Back to photographing the night sky. Unlike most other photo view titles, which are location guides, this book is a bit different. It still has a chapter on locations, but there is so much more in this book. It has everything you might need to know and how to photograph the night sky. There are chapters on equipment, settings and technique, multiple exposure techniques, navigating the night sky, planning, night sky wonders, and even post processing. It really is a complete guide to photographing the night sky. And later, in this video, I'm going to see if I've gained enough knowledge from this book to capture an image of the night sky, something which I've never properly attempted before. But before that, let's take a closer look at Photograph in the Night Sky by Alan Wallace. Alan is one of the world's leading night sky photographers. He has a hugely popular YouTube channel where you can see how passionate he is about the night sky and what an effective communicator he is. He's even featured in his own BBC programme, Moonshot, we captured a stunning image of the moon to celebrate the anniversary of the lunar landings. The book is 576 pages long and measures 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters. It's properly big. In fact, it'd be more accurate to call it an encyclopedia than just a book. Let's take a look inside. The book opens with a foreword by Dr. Sean Doherty, who is the director of the Large Millimeter Array in Chile. Then there is an introduction by Alan himself, where he shares his passion for the night sky and what it means to him. He also gives an overview of the chapters in the book. Let's take a look at some of those chapters. First up is equipment, and there is a ton of useful information in there. I'm a bit of a techie nerd, I have to admit, when it comes to cameras, but I still, still learn lots in this chapter. And usefully, Alan has included a list of cameras that are popular with astrophotographers. The good news is though, you don't need to spend lots of money or get anything fancy to get good results. This chapter also includes a comprehensive section on lenses and information on tripods, head torches, remote releases, timers, filters, lenses, lens warmers, and star trackers, and all those other kind of useful bits of equipment that you might need. Next, there's a chapter on settings and technique, which talks about shutter speed, apertures, the 500 rule, depth of field, white balance, sharpness, noise reduction, using the histogram, composing in the dark, and even light painting and all, with the all within the context of astrophotography. So if you'd like to get into the detail, there are also detailed sections on ISO and ISO invariance and even focusing. The following chapter is on multiple exposure techniques. There is a plethora of information in this chapter. You'll learn about techniques such as stacking, tracking, long exposures, foregrounds, focus stacking, panoramas, star trails, and using astro modified cameras. Aside from the fact I didn't know you could shoot moon trails. This is an extensive section where Alan's knowledge really shines through as it guides you through the equipment, setup, and processing. The next chapter is on navigating the night sky. And if there was ever a chapter in this book that really deserves your attention, it's this one. The chapter is a great example of why this book is so much more than just a photography guidebook, but more of a night sky encyclopedia. It covers the earth and the sun and their relationship what the celestial sphere is, the coordinate system, the stars and their motion, constellations, the motion of the planets and the moon, and how to see and read the night sky. It's sure to be a chapter you'll read more than once as you learn about things you might have taken for granted, like the phases of the moon. Then there's a very important chapter on planning, 
Now, as someone who is new to astrophotography, this is a really important chapter for me to read. It's got sections on clothing, very important. Weather, also very important. The different phases of twilight, moonlight, light pollution, and scouting and planning. I found this section on light pollution particularly helpful, and I learned about the Bortle scale. From that, I was able to understand how polluted the skies are around me. Even so, there are some great suggestions if you shoot in a light polluted area. I thought the sections on planning by direction and planning by season were also be useful as it allowed me to understand and visualize what I might expect to see in the night sky where I am. Not much point in me going out to shoot the Northern Lights in the middle of summer. Next up is a chapter on the night sky wonders. And this was a chapter I was looking forward to reading the most. There are too many sections here to list. There is everything from stars to planets, the moon, meteors, aurora, the Milky Way, and even nature at night, including some glowing mushrooms. I like the way Alan described the night sky in the opening text for this chapter. The night sky is a host to a myriad of visual delights. Meteors blazing across the heavens in the blink of an eye, pillars of aurora ebbing and flowing, the enchanting river of the Milky Way arching from horizon to horizon, and even just a simple twinkling of the stars themselves. Naturally, this is also the biggest of the book's chapters at nearly 200 pages. This chapter is almost worth the book's price alone. The one thing I must also highlight about this chapter and the book as a whole is it's a real showcase for Alan's skills as an astrophotographer. It contains numerous examples of his mastery of this type of photography. The next chapter is all about locations, specifically some of the locations where you can expect dark skies. The locations cover the entire globe, so no matter where you are, whether you're in Australia, America, Europe, or anywhere in between, you should be covered. The photographs in this section are also worth highlighting. Thanks to Alan's dedicated social media following, he has received numerous contributions in this area, so the photographs cover the entire globe. And finally, there is an all-important chapter on post-processing. It not only covers the various packages you can use to edit your photos, but also suggests an editing workflow. So you'll learn how to darken the sky or boost the Milky Way. It very much focuses on how to specifically edit pictures of the night sky. Hi, right, phew, <laughs> that was a lot to cover there, I have to say, but thank you for sticking with me. And that was me just skimming through the content, to be honest. So you can imagine how useful the information is in this book. But before I go and share my final thoughts on this book, let's see if I was able to put some of what I learned from this book into action. Now, I've always been a little apprehensive about night sky photography. It's not that I don't like it. In fact, I greatly admire it. And it's not that I'm scared of the dark either. It's just that, well, I didn't know what I was doing and it seemed a lot of effort to head out in the middle of the night with no real plan. So when I got Alan's book, I was absolutely determined to turn myself into a night sky photographer. But could this book take a total night sky newbie like me, send me out into the dark and for me to come back with a photograph? Well, the first thing I learned from the book was the importance of planning. To get a little inspiration on what I might photograph, I checked out his monthly What's in the Night Sky YouTube videos. Now, despite how late it was in the year, there was still a chance for me to photograph the Milky Way. But then again, where would I film the Milky Way? For me, it pretty well had to be Dartmoor. It has a few areas where the sky would be dark enough, and having read up on the importance of good foreground for your astro shots, some of Dartmoor's truly unique tours and rock formations I thought would be ideal. So once I picked out Great Staple Tour, I checked out Photopills, which is one of the recommended apps in the book that I just happened to already have. I could see from Photopills that the Milky Way would rise above one of the iconic rock stacks, and it would do this about 1 a.m. in the morning. So there was really nothing else for me to do but to go wild camping. So I set up camp, set my alarm, and as predicted, the weather forecast skies were completely clear and above me, I could see millions of stars. I mean, it was amazing to see the night sky like that. I could just about see the Milky Way and it was exactly in the position predicted by photopills. So I got my camera out and I started shooting. I spent probably the next hour photographing the night sky and I have to say, it was amazing, it was really exciting. Just having learned a few of the basics from the book had really made a difference to my confidence. Back home, I processed the photographs I decided to treat myself to Alan's Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. Get those on his website, I'll put a link in the, the video description below. I got the book, got the calendar, so I thought I might as well get the presets as well. And I put them all to use, and these are my final photographs. <music> Well,
welcome back. Well, okay, I'm not about to win Astronomy Photographer of the Year, but that wasn't the point. The point is that even a complete astro newbie like me can benefit from this book. It gave me the confidence and the skills to capture my first proper night sky shots. And now that I have, I'm eager to do it again, I have to say. I want to improve, I want to get better, and I have everything that I need to progress my night sky photography right here in this book. I think I might have caught the night sky bug. Let's ask the question I always ask in an episode of On My Bookshelf. Is this a book for your bookshelf? Well, I think this book is for every photographer's bookshelf. If this book can take a night sky newbie like me and get him out taking night sky photographs, it can do the same thing for you. But this book isn't just an introductory guide for beginners. It's an encyclopedia of information on how to capture and process images of the night sky. The book is suitable for the beginner, those looking to improve their skills, and I would imagine even the expert looking to hone their skills. And even if you didn't fancy going out to capture the night sky photographs yourself, this book is still worth a read. There is so much to learn about the night sky in this book. I can't recommend it enough. So there you have it, Photographing the Night Sky by Alan Wallace. This has probably been a long video, but it's a big book and there was a lot to cover. But if you fancy picking up a copy of this wonderful book, I'll include a link for it below, along with a discount code, which you can also use in any of the current VotaView titles. I do hope you have enjoyed this episode of On My Bookshelf. As always, I've got lots of episodes planned, but if you can't wait for those, I'll put up both the special photo view on my bookshelf playlist, where there are some brilliant titles in that, and I filmed some of those on location. Plus, I'm putting up the main on my bookshelf playlist, which has over 40 episodes in it, so there is sure to be something in there to inspire your photography. But until the next episode, I'll see you then.